Alrighty hosses, welcome back and in this video what I want to do is I want to start talking about the basics of network hardware. Now whenever you're first starting out it can get pretty overwhelming understanding the difference between a modem, routers, switches, servers, all of these different pieces that you need even for a simple home network. So what I want to do like I said is I'm going to go through each device piece by piece and I'm going to break down and explain exactly what it does and why you need it in your network. Now I actually was going to make these videos like okay this is a video about modems tomato tomato yada 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 modem 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 but instead I'm like this is pretty confusing too so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a really really simple home network probably the one that you have in your house if you're just you know have like a plan where you watch TV and you know have basic internet so I'm going to build a very simple home network and then you guys can see the pieces and how they fit in to the big picture a little bit better. So this cloud right here, first of all, I don't know when people started calling the internet cloud, but whenever someone says like any time they say the word cloud, it just means internet. So don't let it confuse you. I don't know why they did that. It's kind of annoying actually. But anyways, this blue cloud is just your internet service provider. Mine is actually Time Warner. So you build your home network and then you send it out to you know the telephone wire, the satellite, whoever you have. That's just essentially representing the cloud. What network devices they have, we don't know, so we just call it the cloud. So everything else is actually the hardware in your home. All right, simple enough. Now this video is about this device right here, a modem. So the first wire that comes from the telephone line outside to your house plugs directly in to the modem. Now once it's in the modem, let me just throw everything out here. It goes to your router. Actually, let's use this one. Let's use a wireless router. And what devices do we want? I got all these cool graphics off of this uh, website, so I'm like, huh, you know, might as well make a little, a bunch of little <laughs> diagrams. All right, so let's say that we have an iMac. Let's see what else I got right here. Um, a cell phone and let's use a laptop. All right, so I just moved into my new apartment and the first thing that I want to do is I want to get some internet. So I call up my cable company, I'm like, hey, can you send some dude over to hook up all my computers? You know, I need to get on the internet. So they do, he comes over and he starts tinkering around at the telephone pole out front. What he's doing, who knows, but he ends up taking a cable from the telephone pole and running it inside my house. So then, believe it or not, he gets a call from his boss, they get in this huge fight, and he just quits. And he's like, you know what, F this job, I'll see you later. So I'm looking down at the wire, all my devices still aren't connected to the internet, I'm like, hey, 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 dude, you can't just leave right now in the middle of a job. And he's like, you know what, Bucky, how he knows my name, I don't know, probably, you know, got it from the file. He's like, Bucky, figure it out yourself. So I'm like, oh, crap, um, can you at least give me a hint? And he's like, yeah, it's easy. All you have to do is you need to buy a modem and you need to buy a router. Take this cable that has the internet right now and plug it in your modem and then from there take an ethernet cable, plug it into your router and then all your devices can connect to it. So some can be wired, others like your phone can be wireless and that's how it works. I'm like, um, all right, that sounds pretty easy. Well, see you later. Good luck with your new job. All right. So now we have to figure out how the heck this actually works, what type of equipment to buy, and all of that fun stuff. So the first thing I do is I start reading up on modems. Now, I learned that, okay, whenever you have a home network, let me change my color right here. Ah, oh, blue, nice. All right, so whenever you have your own home network, I can see visually that it has to pass through a modem to get to the internet. I'll just say internet. So we can see visually that a modem is a device that connects your network to the internet. That's what it is. Now I start reading online and technically I learned what this does is it converts digital signals from your router to analog signals that can be sent over copper wire. So I actually write that down. Digital to analog. 
So the broad overview of a modem, if you only remember one thing, is it's a device that connects your network, your home network, to the internet. And technically behind the scenes what it does is it converts digital signals from your router or any device that goes into it to analog signals. In other words, a signal that can be sent over copper wire in, you know, into the cloud. So I'm like, okay, that sounds pretty easy. I start looking online for modems and turns out there's like a thousand to choose from. What one do I pick? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is this. Before you even go on Newegg or Amazon or anything like that, go to your ISP's website. I have Time Warner, but every you know ISP has them. And start looking for the page that says, these are the modems that have been approved to use with our service. So different internet service providers only allow a specific set of modems, and these are all the ones that I can choose from. So again, this is the manufacturer, this is just the model number, this is the speed we'll talk about in a second, but basically, you just can't pick any modem online, they need to be approved. Now, another thing is that, I'll show you what I have, alright. So I have the ultimate plan, but in different areas they have, um, you know, faster than this. I can only get 50 megabytes per second, no matter what. So that means if I choose a modem, you know, if I just buy the most expensive one, that can you know handle 300 megabytes per second it isn't really worth it because sure my modem is you know awesome and it can handle all that speed but if my internet maxes out at 50 then you know what's the point so you always want to buy a modem that either matches or exceeds because if you you know decide to upgrade your internet plan later on then you can always you know bump it up so again make sure that it's compatible with your internet service provider and also make sure that the speed is at least that of your internet plan so we say okay we narrowed it down quite a bit now there's some other couple technical things and let me pull up a clean now to be honest whenever you're buying a modem for the very first time that's probably all you need to know just look at the reviews and make sure that you choose them from the list and it's going to be compatible with your internet service provider however if you want to know a little bit more about them I'll explain this now the standards that modems use to communicate it's called doc if I can write if I'm on my right thing all right doc sys so like I said these are just the rules for communication for modems and every year why well, don't want to say every year but every so often they come out with an updated version so one point there's actually a bunch of different ones 1.x 2.0 most modems are 3.0 right now and I'm sure in the future that this will get newer and newer as modems get faster and faster but you always want to get the latest version and also this isn't just for best performance but they're also backwards compatible so if you're like okay I know I have a device that works with you know Doxis 2.0 modems if you get 3.0 it's gonna work as well since all of these are backwards compatible so again get the latest version to make sure that you have you know the most updated technology another thing that you're gonna see are the channels and most modems well, I don't want to say most. I didn't do a study or anything, but a lot of the ones I look at are 4x4 four four or 8x4. And again, these are channels. Now, the first number in this means downstream whenever you're downloading something, and the second number means upstream. So, the one that I'm going to be showing you guys in the future, I'm actually, I didn't even know if I told you this, but in the future, I'm actually going to be filming me sh um, setting up an entire home network and you know talking you guys through how to do it hands-on the one that I'm gonna be using is a 4x4 if you have a huge family that's on the internet all the time you might want to look into getting an 8x4 but yeah either way there you go and just one other little side note this isn't really a problem as long as you're choosing one of the modems from the list on their website but make sure you get the right kind for example there are cable modems if you are you know if you have a uh, cable internet there's also like DSL modems so make sure that you know if you have like Time Warner cable that you don't buy a DSL modem but like I said this is pretty obvious stuff as long as you choose one from their list then you should be golden so that's the basics of modems again if you want to look at this one last time what they are are pretty much devices that connect your network to the internet 
all the rest is, uh, you know, fun little details. So there you go. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.